Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Rock Soccer Raw Episode 9. Today we talk about Goku Black as a character. So, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy Goku Black as a character. I think he's one of the more unique Dragon Ball characters that we've had. <laughs> now granted, I'm sure that... You know, they're likely to find some way to screw it up, but at least for now, as of the recording of this video... He seems to be one of the more interesting characters so far. You know, I actually care about learning about his background. And you know, I remember when he first premiered and how uh, excited everybody was. And I even remember, bef <laughs> I even remember before that, you know, people were even speculating that there might be an evil Goku arc or something. So in a way, that has kind of happened. But you know, I find the irony is that. You know, the, a lot of people complained about, well, complained back then about, you know, evil Goku arc, but yet a lot of people will agree that this is probably the best arc so far in the entire series. And some would even say that if it keeps going in this direction, you know, really good uh, character interactions and, you know, storyline and everything, then it might even be one of the best arcs in all of Dragon Ball history. And I certainly think it has potential. Now sure, you know, not all the episodes were spectacular, but they were definitely better than the average, let's be honest. And not just the average in Dragon Ball Super, but I mean the average episode in most Dragon Ball series, I would say that the average episode in this arc has been better than. Anyway, when it comes to Goku Black, I re really enjoyed his introduction, you know, how he... Like, he seemed pretty menacing, but not in, like, a uh, arrogant bad guy kind of way. And, you know, that's another thing I like about Goku Black. He's not just your typical pompous, arrogant bad guy like we've seen with Vegeta to a certain extent. And Frieza, and even Cell to a certain degree. You know, it's refreshing to see a bad guy who actually has a motivation beyond just wanting to kill everything and destroy the universe you know he says his motivation is to you know enact justice by destroying all humans and obviously in the context they pretty much mean destroying all mortals so you know it's assumed that that his motivation is basically to destroy all mortals because he thinks that they're evil and whatnot and that they deserve to be destroyed and of course that includes, you know, Earth, which of course he landed on in uh, Future Chunks' timeline. And you know, he seems to have a somewhat of a personal gripe against Trunks, uh, I guess for fighting him and for challenging him and whatnot. Though I'm interested in to see uh, whether or not they encounter that version of Goku Black, because he did seem like he was out of the, out of the uh, game for a while, but, you know. We'll see. Now, another thing I really enjoy about Goku Black is his uh, techniques. You know, I noticed that while he does have unique techniques like that, you know, that yellowish, uh, you know, black orb attack or whatever, he also has an attack that's very similar to the Kamehameha, except it's, you know, purple instead of, you know, blue. And unfortunately, can't turn Super Saiyan yet, but, you know, they've been leaking spoiler. Well, people have been talking about spoilers that his hair color might be pink. Now, briefly on the whole pink hair, I like, I actually don't mind it that much. There's some people that seem to have a problem with it for some reason, but, you know, I actually think that uh, it's very Toriyama. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Toriyama was one that actually came up with uh, that concept. You know, people were pro he probably saw people coming up with the whole white hair thing, and he was like, he was like, white? <laughs> nah, make it pink. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what he was like. So yeah, it definitely doesn't surprise me that they decided, that Toriyama decided to go with the pink hair instead of the white hair, because white would have been too obvious since he's already dressed in black and since there's all these pictures of him as a Super Saiyan with white hair and everything. You know, it definitely makes more sense to throw people a curveball and to make it pink, because that's literally the last color we would have expected. 
you know, other than, you know, Rainbow or whatever. And, you know, I enjoy the fact that that uh, Goku Black is a character that, you know, he seems to actually study his opponents. He doesn't just try to plow through them like most uh, bad guys do. They just try to beat their enemies into submission. No, Goku Black actually is a skilled fighter, which I think is pretty rare for the villains. You know, I would say, at least when they were villains, the most skilled fighter, I would probably say, might have been Cell. Because, you know, he had the fighting ability of all the other Z-Warriors. But even he was lacking in certain instances, I noticed. You know, I think Goku was still a superior fighter in skill to Cell. It's just Cell was superior in terms of power and his uh, list of abilities. But uh, Goku Black, I think, is one of the few characters that is a truly skilled fighter that's also a bad guy. Because usually the really skilled fighters, I notice, are the good guys. And, you know, the people that are in between, you know, Beerus and Whis and whatnot. So it's refreshing to see a villain that, you know, he analyzes his opponents and he fights them uh, according to what would be the best option and not just try to plow through them. But then again, he can't really plow through them because, you know, he's uh, weaker than Goku. But heck, even with Trunks, uh, he didn't really try to plow through him. He was just... He was analyzing the way Trunks was fighting and was trying to fight him in the best way possible. And, you know, he's tried to learn from his mistakes and whatnot. You know, I really enjoy that kind of uh, aspect to him. And I also, I also like the fact that he gets stronger uh, as of... If I'm not mistaken, I think he said he gets stronger as the fight progresses. So it's sort of a real version of Broly, I guess. And I say real because, you know, a lot of people... They misunderstand when they when Broly said, you know, my power is rising, overflowing. What he really meant was his power was near its limit. It, if not, it was exceeding its limit, so he let go some of his power. Now, sure, I used to be one of those people who believed that his power constantly increased, but after, you know, reading the line in uh, Japanese, I realized that, you know, he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about just letting the power go from his body because there's too much of it. So Broly actually doesn't get stronger as he fights. Rather, he just he just has a much higher, you know, uh, limit than uh, the other Z Warriors at that time. But he doesn't actually get stronger as he fights. At least not beyond what any regular Saiyan would. So, yeah, I suppose all those things I uh, really like about Goku Black as a character. The fact that he, you know, analyzes his opponents. He, you know, tries to predict their uh, fighting techniques and tries to uh, perfect his own. Because he even stated after he fought Goku that he's going to ingrain his fighting style into his own. Which makes sense because, you know, he has Goku's body. So he might as well try to mimic his fighting style. Well, that and, of course... Obviously, Goku's the most successful fighter out of all of them. You know, the only ones that would be better than him would be, you know, Beerus and Whis. So, if he can master Goku's fighting style, then he would be a much more effective uh, enemy. So, I suppose I look forward to seeing more of Goku Black and learning more about his origin. It's definitely one of the more interesting origins so far. And considering we don't know that much about the previous villains that have come about you know they just say a few lines about them and maybe one or two flashbacks and even then they expound more upon it in the anime than in the manga usually yeah so because of all of that I'm looking more forward to uh, Goku Black you know the reveal about his origins or whatnot. and you know some people I notice are complaining that you know they seem to be you know dragging their feet and treading along but you know, with some exceptions, I actually like that they're taking their time with it because, you, you know, if they rush it too much, then they might not include as many details. And I also feel that, you know, if they go a bit slow, then people will, you know, they can more gradually uh, take in this information, I guess. You know, that's one of the problems I have with a lot of uh, modern, you know, shows and movies and whatnot, is that they try to speed up the pace uh, too much you know the pacing is way way too fast I mean I, 
in, in my personal opinion, I think that in terms of like media pacing or whatever in uh, fiction, I think that the best pacing might have been perhaps in the 90s, maybe the late 80s and early 90s. Like most movies that came out then, especially action movies, to me, they had the best balance in terms of pacing. You know, it was quick, but not, you know, it wasn't ADHD quick like you see a lot of movies and TV shows today, but I suppose that's a separate discussion that I'll talk about. Well, anyway, that's been my current thoughts on Goku Black. So, what do you guys think of Goku Black? Are you enjoying his character? Is he one of your favorites? Because I know he's one of my favorites. And if they keep this up, he'll definitely be in my top 10 favorite villains of all Dragon Ball. Like, forget just Super. He's already my favorite Dragon Ball Super villain. But at this rate, he's going to be one of my uh, top 10 favorite Dragon Ball villains of all time. So anyway, I will see you guys later.